Working with Godot is a breeze, and what makes it even easier is building custom tools for your specific workflow. Today, I'll show you multiple levels of tools you can create in Godot 4 to speed up your development, from simple to most complex. Let's go. This video was made possible by supporters on Patreon. If you want to help me make more videos like these, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks. The first tools you can create are runtime tools. You're probably already doing it, and if you're not, you should definitely start. What I talk about is tools or features that are solely intended for you, the developer. This can be a debug interface showing you various stats or a console enabling you to spawn enemies, pickups or switch level. A good example of that is the console add-on made by Jitsbo. I use it in Hyperslice and it's incredibly useful to be able to spawn enemies or add upgrades and abilities with just one command. While I'm recommending add-ons, debug menu found on the Godot X10 library's GitHub is super useful to monitor your game's performances. This is the simplest kind of tool to make because it's basically just like making your game. If you don't want these tools to be able to be run by users, you can add a condition to disable them when running in release or outside of the editor. OS has feature editor to know if you're running a build from the editor and OS has feature debug to know if you're running a debug build. And of course, has feature release for the release version. Probably one of the best thing in Godot is tool scripts. Adding add tool at the top of your script will make it run inside the editor. This means you can make stuff move if you need to preview some animation code, and of course you can compute stuff based on the user input. I often use tool scripts to set up a bunch of things automatically, like reacting to an enum change or setting up the visuals in collisions based on a size input, for example. A simple example is having an export variable to control the size of something. To react to the change, you can create a set function. Inside the function, you can do the calculation you want when the input changes. The set function is automatically called when you modify the value. In this case, I can update the sprite size and the collision shape radius. In the script, you can check engine is editor hint to know if you're running inside the editor or not. This is useful to avoid doing useless calculations, often done in the physics or process functions. That should only happen at runtime, which could be the AI of an enemy, for example. When you need to run something once, it can be a bit painful as there is no easy way to do it. What is usually done is exporting a boolean, running your code in the set function and setting it to false immediately after. This will be fixed in Godot 4.4 though, as there will be a new at export tool button annotation, which will help creating buttons specifically for that purpose. Quick tip, while this doesn't require a tool script, I thought it would be interesting to share. You can evaluate code in the script. Simply highlight the code, right click and click evaluate selection. While this is not really a tool, it can be useful to quickly compute something, like the value of sine of 0.5 for example. Continuing with tool scripts, there's something a bit special you can do. If you extend editor script and implement a run method, the script can be executed from scripts editor file run menu or by pressing Ctrl Shift X. This can be a nice way to have a one-time script in the editor without using the previous method or without creating a full-blown add-on, while still being able to access the editor interface using the get editor interface method. You can also get the currently edited scene, which allows you to modify it, add children, etc. This can be especially useful to automate certain tasks or provide any functionalities that you can think of inside the editor as a run one script. You can also pop up some UI to ask the user something and then run whatever based on the input. It could be renaming a bunch of nodes, adding nodes, scenes, or setting up some predefined parameters, for example. A PR is already there to allow these scripts to run using the common palette, which would make them even easier to use. It's still in the work, but you can give it a try, and I'm sure you'll see how useful it could be to have a script running from the common palette. The next logical step from tool scripts is to build add-ons or plugins, use whatever name you prefer. They have the benefit of being registered in the editor and easily enabled or disabled, and can be shared with others. With add-ons, you can also extend different classes, allowing you to do specific things in the engine. Most notably, you have editor plugin, with which you can create tools for the editor, and even add buttons, panels, and more. You probably know add-ons that are doing that already, such as Dialogic or Block Coding that I showcase in my latest video. You should definitely watch it if you didn't already. You can do more than that. That though. For example, export plugin is a class to run your own logic at export time. This can be useful to include or remove some part of your project depending on the export or do some special packaging. You also have import, 3D gizmo, inspector, and visual shader plugins. So as you can see, there's quite a lot you can do with them. 
The main advantage of plugins is probably the ease of development and also the ease of use. You can create them in JDScript or C-sharp, so it's the same as what you're used to when making a game. You can then easily share them using the asset library. Also, add-ons don't have to be super serious. Remember, Godot is a game engine, so you can do the same game stuff inside the editor. Just look at Ridiculous Coding by Jotson to get an idea of what could be done with an add-on. Right now there's no way to have global plugins, which means you'll have to add the specific plugins you want to your project, which can be a bit cumbersome, but thankfully this will be fixed in the future as it's being discussed right now. In the meantime there's a globalized add-on that I showcased in a previous video if you're interested. Before diving into more complexity in C++, there's also the possibility of making a standalone tool using Godot. Godot is not only good at making games, but can also make great applications. The UI toolkit is very powerful, and you can limit the performance impact of your app by turning a special setting in the editor. This will allow Godot to run slower and not redraw elements if not needed. Many tools can start as add-ons and then become standalone. You probably already know a few of them. Material Maker, Pixelorama, Pixel Over, RPG in a Box, Cozy Blanket, and Cadmus of Kings, to name a few. You can look at the previous Godot video showcase and the website to see other tools. Canvas of Kings started as an in-editor tool, if I'm correct, as it was developed to make Might of Merchants. It was then turned into a full standalone app. Making your tool standalone has many benefits, most notably being easier to share, especially with non-developer users, and of course, gives you total control on what you're doing. You're not limited by the editor anymore. You can export your tool and make it run on the web, on desktop, and even on mobile. Cozy Blanket is a good example of that, made specifically for the iPad. And of course, while making your standalone app, you can use all of the techniques we are seeing in this video. A new feature of Godot 4 is GD Extension. It's the GD native successor, which aims at giving you the ability to use C++ and native libraries and other languages more easily. GD extensions are very powerful because they can have quite a deep integration inside Godot, but are extremely easy to use for end users, as you can just drop the pre-compiled extension in your Godot project and start using it. Since the introduction of GD extensions, we've seen some amazing examples. Jolt and Rapier are full physics engine replacement for 3D and 2D respectively, for example. As a user, you download them from the asset lib just like an add-on and boom, you're basically done. This is incredible because it allows very powerful libraries to be created with the ease of use of an add-on-like experience. TD extensions are really powerful as they allow you to write C++ code quite easily and you have a relatively low level access to those components. Hence why people can make physics engine with it, but also language bindings. If I'm correct, the Godot team is aiming to make C-sharp a GD extension in the future. Even for developers, it means you don't have to recompile Godot entirely and your code lives separate from the Godot sources. I recently created my first GD extension to add background blur to transparent windows, and it was a good experience. I think the boring part is setting up everything and understanding what needs to be where, but once it's done, it's relatively easy. I think it can be a great way to try C++ if you're not too familiar with it. To sum up, this is probably the best solution if you need to use specific libraries or if you want to write high-performance C++ code. This can be especially useful for procedural generation, lots of enemies AI, or complex algorithms such as neural nets, computer vision, etc. Speaking of coding and C++, if you want to sharpen your programming skills, today's sponsor Brilliant is the perfect resource for you. In game development, understanding coding fundamentals is essential, whether you're building systems, optimizing performance, or designing gameplay mechanics. Brilliant makes learning these fundamentals engaging and approachable, with a range of interactive courses in coding, computer science and more. Covering everything from algorithms to data structures to even machine learning, you'll find the tools you need to level up your skills, no matter where you are in your journey. And the best part? Their hands-on problem-solving approach lets you do rather than just read, making complex topics like recursion or sorting algorithms intuitive and fun. You can even learn on the go with Brilliant's app. Their bite-sized lessons will make it easy to fit learning into your day. To try Brilliant free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash mrelliteach. Scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description. Plus, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring part of the video. Modules are quite similar in many aspects to GD extensions, but they live directly in the Godot source code, so you won't be able to distribute them easily like extensions. You will have to recompile Godot entirely. Part of the engine is already separated in modules. GDScript is a module, for example, but Godot Physics, GLTF, Navigation, OGG, Raycast, Regex, etc. are also modules. You won't have any 
any limitations as you are directly integrated in the source. But I guess most of you won't need modules and would benefit from extension and the ability to distribute them easily. I personally added modules recently as I'm working on the switch port of Dashbong. Making modules here makes sense as I'm already working with a modified version of Godot and I don't need to share the code with users through an extension or even support multiple platforms as the code is solely for the switch. In the end, there's not a lot of differences and I think distribution is probably your only concerns most of the time, so you should look at extensions first. While not really a tool in itself, you can of course modify the source code directly. You can implement fixes, pull PRs that are quite useful to you. You're free to modify as you see fit, of course. I doubt you would do that to create tools though, but I had to mention it for the sake of completeness. And with that, you should have everything you need to add tools, small or big, to your games. I hope you found this interesting. Don't hesitate to give tips in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!